Bouchard, is that right? Did I said. Yep, that's right. I said his name right. Um, most important thing about it is some people get the name pronunciation right. Uh, Jared's been a member for uh, uh, about a year now. Couple of years. Couple of years. Does great work. He's going to tell us about uh, 3D modeling using uh, Fusion 360. Uh, Jared. Yep. Thanks, guys. Okay, I, first of all, I want to apologize. We tried to work out a better solution for the resolution on this monitor, but it's, it, we're kind of stuck with what we got. So I'll try to explain everything as I'm going, and this will just be a general overview. There's no way I can touch not even 5% of what this does, but I will get you 95% of the way there to getting whatever you want started, and you can do your own research and ask me questions or whatever. I can, I will respond to email, whatever. But um, I'm not an expert at Fusion 360. I've been doing CAD and modeling for at least 20 years now. Um, but this is a rather new program. The great thing about this, if you don't know, it's free. And um, this is made by Autodesk, yes. Okay, it's free. Yep. When, you, when you go to download it, they say only if you're a student or one other. Caveat. You do it like a hobbyist. So I just re-upped mine in March, I think. As long as you don't make $100,000 a year on your side hustle, whatever, it's free. Okay. So you just put in there and then like at the very end when you're doing your registration, you just say like, I'm a hobbyist or I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's basically just saying you're going to use it for your side thing. Their major concern is like big businesses. They don't want them taking advantage of free software. This is to get people introduced to it. This is the best free software I've ever used in my entire life, hands down. The most useful thing for me um, and the things that I like to do and I like to make. So it's very good. And what they're hoping is that you'll eventually go over and pay for this and get more added features. But you don't need any of those to do everything that you need to do. I've never ran into limitations. Yeah. So what's the competitor? Is there something else out there? Why? SolidWorks. Uh, the biggest competitor is uh, Google SketchUp, but just because it's free. I don't like Google SketchUp. Um, there's a lot of other Google that anymore. Some other. Yeah, sold, they, they it got them. bought out by Google, or uh, it got Google sold it, I believe, and they're developing SketchUp still. Um, they were at a conference that I was at last month, and they just couldn't convince me because the great thing about this is that your design is not set in stone. Like when you draw a line in Google SketchUp, that thing is done and it's there until you erase it and make a new one. But on this, it's called parametric. And so if I want something to be 20 inches and then I show my wife and she's like, no, no, that's way too small. It needs to be 30 inches. And so you just go and you change that dimension and boom, 30 inches. You're done. You're finished. <coughs> everything automatically updates. As long as you set up your drawings and everything properly, um, everything will automatically update and scale and size and so you're good to go and it's very dynamic that way. Does anybody here do um, consignment, um, or not consignment, but um, they make projects for people? Um, commission. Yeah, commission work. Does anybody do commission work by chance? This is really good for commission work because you don't have to sit down in your shop and make all this fancy stuff. You can just uh, make a design, show them on the computer, they can go over it and, and um, make comments, whatever, and you're, you're left with very little time invested. And they know what you're talking about. This is really good for communication. Um, a couple more things before I get started. Uh, there's an app on your phone that you can download, and it, this whole thing works off the <coughs> cloud, right? So you don't save anything locally. You can. Somebody was going to ask me about being able to work offline. You have to obviously be able to get to an internet connection to download it. And then you can work for two weeks offline. And then you're going to have to go get re-up somewhere. So you just have to go to to an uh, internet facility, wherever, McDonald's, and just sign back in and let it update and download your files. And then you can go back offline and get it for two weeks. So, so I got that straight from their website. Here, we're offline. We have, we have internet here, actually. Oh, there's a... Yeah, there's a Wi-Fi. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so you can share all that stuff. It's three dimensional. You can zoom in, zoom out, show the whole bit. Yeah. Do they have any rights to the things you draw? Um, as far as I know, there there is nothing like that. There's no caveats. I've never heard of anything like that. Nobody's ever got their work stolen. This is, I mean, if you're on YouTube and stuff, a lot of these makers and woodworkers, they're starting to go to this 
program or they have been using it for a long time and nobody's ever said anything to anybody in this in this realm so um and i've not heard anything period they're really just i, I don't really understand it but it's they're, they're really out there to help people to with this program do they watermark it or no nope. like so once you once you render something out it's yours it's, it's yours you yeah. can't tell that it came from no nope. 360 or anything else no nope. i mean this is out there for hobbyists for anybody who use no caveats really um, as far as we're concerned, I think there's probably some high-end stuff, like you can only save out a thousand models or something, but I've probably got 200 different designs that I've made, and I haven't had it, seen it limited. Can you use a tablet? Huh? Can you use it? I mean, we're using a mouse every day. Uh, it definitely should be used with a mouse, just because of the precision of it and things like that. So, oh, but not like that, because, you know, AutoCAD needs to use a tablet. Yeah. Uh, um, and you don't, that's kind of, right. I don't think you use that much anymore. There might be a tablet interface for it, but I would highly suggest getting a mouse on anything that you're going to use on this. So um, I'll go over some basic stuff. So DC, uh, I think, was the one who suggested this, and he wanted to see, uh, in particular, a bench similar to Jay Bates's workbench, right? That's correct. Okay, so I'm going to use this as an, exa as an example, and we'll, I'll kind of roll through this and show you the basics of how the workflow works. And then you guys feel free to ask me questions. Um, we don't have a whole lot of time today, but I'll try to go through this and give you an overview and show you how you can make flat work. And then I could show you some training stuff if you want to simulate that as well, um, stuff like that. Okay, so the way this whole thing is gonna work is um, your design area is right here. You've got a tree over here. They call this the design tree. And this, all your features will show up here. And the things that you're making and how you make them will show up at the bottom. And I'll show, that'll make more sense here in a second. But I've tried to focus in. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, very sorry. Yeah. Is it Windows yeah. and Mac compatible? Yeah, Windows and Mac compatible. That's that's correct. Is this the one? I don't know if that makes it any better. I know it's still hard to read. I'll try and tell you everything that I'm doing. If you don't catch something, please let me know. So this whole program is largely based off of sketches. So this right here is to create a new sketch. So I'm going to create a sketch and then I've got three different planes here that are already up. The, the front plane, the top plane, and the right plane. And that's all based off of this coordinate system here. So you're already designing a three-dimensional view or whatever, but we're going to simplify that real quick. So I'm going to do a sketch and I'm going to do it on the uh, front surface here. Okay, and what I'm going to start out is I'm going to make just a simple, uh, I'm going to go up here to sketch and I'm going to make a rectangle and a two point rectangle. <coughs> There's hot keys for all of this. I could also hit R to make this happen. Okay, so I just click two points, one here and one here. And all I'm going to do is, um, sorry, I'm, I'm going to try not to use a whole lot of shortcuts. Um, I apologize. Okay. And I am going to use a shortcut. I apologize. So I'm going to hit D for dimension. Okay. On the keyboard D and then I just click on what I want to make on what I want to dimension. So right here, I'm going to make this a two by four. So I'm going to make this three and a half inches tall and there it just clicks a three and a half inches tall and I'm going to make the top right here one and a half inches. Okay. So now we've got a basic outline for a two by four. Now, you could just click and drag on this thing and it will move. And that's because we don't have it constrained. Right now, all these lines are blue and that means it can float wherever it wants to. Now, right here, this says sketch palette. Well, okay. So it says sketch palette over here on the right. It's got all these features. But what, what you can do is scroll down and you can constrain this. So this is basically just creating a two-dimensional sketch and you start constraining it. So it can't float, it can't give you odd dimensions and things like that. So the goal would be to make this thing completely black. The way I'm going to do that is I'm just simply going to click on the corner of this. I'm going to drag it to the origin point and it's going to snap. See how it snapped to? That means it's going to create a, uh, a constraint there. And now everything turned black. That's because everything has been defined. It cannot change dimension unless I change uh, the dimension itself. So say for some reason I'm going to go with two inch lumber. I just change that dimension to two inches. It grows to two inches. So we'll go back to one and a half. 
I'm gonna hit stop sketch down here at the bottom right hand corner. I'm gonna hold shift and my middle mouse button, and I'm sorry, I know this is a little bit quick, but I wanna give you guys a brief, or a, a quick view of how we're gonna do this. So I'm gonna look at this in a three dimensional view. I'm gonna come over here to create and do an extrusion. So now I've got the profile of my two by four. I'm gonna click on that, that profile and I'm gonna extrude it. I'm gonna go this direction and um, you just pull that arrow and it'll get it started for you in whatever direction. So right now it's coming up with minus seven inches, okay? So say I wanna make this bench 48 inches long and because of the direction it is, I'm gonna put minus 48. I hit enter and it automatically creates this two by four for the length of my bench. I hit OK, and uh, now I've got my first 2x4. Now if I, um, I want to make this a little more realistic, um, and you can do this with any of your boards or your standard stock, I'm going to hit, uh, I can hit modify and hit fill it, or I can hit the key, F command. So I click on my four corners here, and I'm going to create a round over so that um, this looks like an actual 2x4 real quick. So I've got that done right here. I put in my quarter inch. This is going to create the round over on the sides. And now it looks a lot more like a two by four. Okay. So instead of having to do that each and every single time, say you don't want to create 20 sketches for each of these 20 boards. There's a shortcut to make this a lot quicker. So I'm going to go to create pattern and a rectangular pattern. Okay. Go to the top, this says pattern type. I'm gonna choose bodies. So what I just created was a body. And it's gonna show up in this tree right here. If I select it, that's the body that, that I want to. So sometimes your, um, your model will get a little bit, uh, a little bit congested, okay? And you may not be able to click on exactly what you want to, but always remember that there's a tree over here that will allow you to click on your bodies or your sketches or other things that make up the entire model, okay? So I selected that object, the direction I want to go, I'm going to click on the um, on this red line, this, this is the x-axis in this situation, I can click on part of my model and it will go in the direction of that model also. Alright, there's different ways you can do this, you can do an extent or I can do, I'm going to do spacing. So an extent will go over a certain distance that will make it. But this one, I know I want them to be back to back because we're creating the top of our workbench here. So I'm just going to say I want five of them, a quantity of five, and I want to move them one and a half inches because that's the, the distance of uh, a two by four, right? So I've got that down. Um, now I go ahead and hit OK. And there I've got the start of a two by four bench. Now, granted, you're probably going to get rid of these. Um, these roundovers and mill that stuff off. So that wouldn't be there, but um, you get the gist of how this thing works. <coughs> okay, so now we've created an extrusion and made a simple two by four. Um, that works with any shape. You can make a Gibson guitar body. You can make whatever you want and you can make an extrusion of it and you'll get this, that same profile stretched out as far as, far as you uh, would like. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, mortise for being able to put the legs in this. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a sketch on top. Now it's asking for a face, it wants a face to put this on. You can use, once you start developing features on, on the uh, model, you can use those features. So I'm going to use this top plane, this top surface, I'm going to create a sketch. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make another rectangle. Create rectangle, two point rectangle. Now if you go slow, you'll see that things start to highlight. That means that it's snapping. This X here, if you can see it on the screen, if you can't, I apologize. There's a blue X here that showed up on the screen and that shows that it's gonna snap to that line. So that way you know you're not, your, your model could get messed up if you didn't have snapping. So this will make sure that the edge of that board is selected. Okay, so I'm gonna click there, Draw my, my rectangle on the two corner points, and then um, I hit escape to get out of that command. I'm going to hit D to make a dimension. I want to dimension the distance between those two boards. Again, we're going to use a standard uh, two by four, so I'm going to go three and a half inches. And we're set. 
Now, say I want to control the distance from the edge of the uh, workbench to how far I'm going to go in. So I say D again, and the dimension command comes up. Select the edge of where I want to cut out, the edge of my workbench. <coughs> Drag this over here so we can see it. So I want to go six inches from that edge. Hit enter, moves it to six inches. All right, so stop sketch. I'm done with this, and now what I'm going to do, what we're going to do is remove that material. And um, there's a couple ways to do this, but you can use an extrude here. Um, it's a little counterintuitive, but what this will allow us to do, if I click on this, and sometimes because of the way it's developed, the sketch will get divided into a few pieces. So I'm going to select this portion, this area, this area, and this area. And that's all that sketch that we just created, okay? I'm going to drag this arrow down, and it's automatically going to start cutting out that area. When it turns red, that means it's removing material. So this allows me to make a cut into this top uh, workbench. I'm going to go ahead. Um, because I don't care, there's nothing else below it. I know it's cutting through this bottom surface. Here again, I'm holding shift and the middle mouse wheel. And I can rotate to the bottom and see that it's going to cut out the bottom. Um, so my distance, none of that stuff matters. The operation, it's going to cut. Now, if, say I didn't want to um, cut through. I just wanted to make the board. And, uh, and uh, I, I wanted to just have the board coming out of the bottom. So we, we could simplify this. There's two ways you could do that. You could do a join, which means it's going to make the two bodies one. If we look on this left-hand side here, it's showing that we have five bodies so far. And that's just the five two by fours that we got going across. So if I hit join, it's going to it's, what it's probably going to do is put four of these together, three of the boards, and then the new board that we're creating. So um, th that'll all be one body. You want to try and keep that separated because when you're doing your work and you're doing your model, you want to try and envision how you're going to make this. So I'm going to create um, a cut. One more thing I could do is create a new body, and that will just create its own entity. It'll be intersecting, but it, it won't be a big deal, especially if you're trying to conceptualize. You don't have to worry about all that. So I'm going to hit cut, hit OK, and now we've got a mortise or a semi mortise that we can uh, put a board through here. I apologize. Put a board through and, um, and create a nice shoulder here. So I'm going to do that now. Again, um, that sketch is gone, but I can reuse that sketch. It's hidden. Um, to hide things, all you have to do is come here and hit the light bulb next to it. So now all those bodies just went away because they're under a folder. This is a folder up here. You can see that. Click on that again, and I can hide individual bodies. So if I need to see something differently or I need to work with it or you just you want to come up with different designs and then go back and turn them off and turn them back on, you can do that in the same space. Okay, so I'm going to turn that sketch back on that I just made. And I'm going to create an extrusion. Same thing that we were just doing. And I'm going to come down and come down. We'll make this 36 inches tall. Minus 36. Yeah, minus 36. Very good. <coughs> okay, so now we've got one layer. All right, so we're starting to see the beginnings of a workbench. I'm not going to design a whole workbench here just because there's not enough time and the features would, would kind of be shot or, you know, we wouldn't get to see a whole lot. So say I want to put dog holes in this. So we're going to do something very similar. We're going to create a sketch on this top surface. Now I can hit C for circle or I can come in here and hit sketch, circle. And I'm going to uh, do by the center point. So I just come in here and uh, I'm just going to rub, I'm just going to eyeball this at the moment. So I'm going to make this, uh, as you can see, the, the numbers here are, oh, I forgot I've got a touch screen. Um, apologize. Right here, I apologize, you can't read this, but I'm going to make it three quarters of an inch. Hit enter. And now I've got a three quarter inch dog hole. So um, just as you could create a pattern or an array in a three dimensional space, you can also do it in a two dimensional space. So if I go in here, I go to sketch. I go to rectangular pattern. This will allow me to create the same 
similar concept in a two-dimensional way. So I want to select an object. I want to select this circle. The direction I want to go is going to be uh, downward. Right now it's got uh, three of these made. Let's make six of these. I want to make them six inches apart. And uh, right now, as you can see, it's creating uh, a two-dimensional array here. So it's going to go to the right and down. I don't necessarily need that, so I'm going to get rid of that on this side. On this second uh, direction, I'm going to put a quantity of one. So those should go away. That's not the direction I wanted. So I'm going to put one on top and six down below. And I'm going to go down six inches. Okay. So now I've got these holes spaced out. I can hit OK. Again, I'm going to create an extrusion of, of these parts. I'm going to create a cut. I'm going to try and click on these circles. They'll highlight. Sometimes you got to make sure it snaps to the right thing. Yeah, snaps to the right thing. For some reason I'm getting issues here. Okay, and then I'm just going to drag this arrow through, creates those holes, and there I've got dog holes in my bench. Pretty slick. Yes. That's a lot easier than what it is in SketchUp. Yes. So and you have to do each one individually. Right. And say I, I don't like that. Say that I want to change uh, the spacing. I don't like it. Like I said earlier, this thing is called parametric. So if I want to change that sketch that I just made, I come up here to where the sketch is at, I right click, and I hit edit sketch. That's going to allow me to come in here and change the dimensions on here. So if I hit D, I come in here, and unfortunately because of the way that I've created this array, I'm going to have to space each of these out. So right now it's at 1.2 inches. Say I want to go to 2.5 inches. It should update. I made a liar out of me. Oh, okay. So here's a little uh, tip here. This right here, you can't probably see it too well, but this symbol right here shows me there's a constraint. If I go in here and I double click that, I'm going to go in and be able to modify this array that I just made or this pattern. So if I want to change it and I want it to be uh, six of those, so, so I spread it out over six inches because I did extent instead of spacing. So let's go here and change this to spacing and it's going to make it every, right now it's at minus 1.2 because it, the awesome thing about this is it can also do math. So if you want to enter this and you, you, you're not quite sure about the math of this whole thing, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to say I want this to be, you know, I, I want it to be 43 inches long for some reason and I need seven of them. So instead of like trying to figure that out on your own, all you got to do is hit 43 divided by seven. Hit enter and it will automatically, well, because I didn't put the negative sign, it went the other direction. But it'll keep you honest, that's for sure. Um, but as you can see, it, it spaced those out the other direction. So I'm going to go ahead and hit st stop sketch. And you can see here that it cut those holes in the opposite direction automatically did the cutting. You don't have to re-enter that information, anything. It's done for you, okay? All right, so this is going to get you 90% of the way on your flat work. Um, I'm trying to think what else I could show in this aspect. Yeah? So, for instance, like a, a padlock or a key, you'll have a, a, a circle cut out and a notch. How yeah. How complicated would it be to join that together? Okay, so... So if this, this whole thing was a padlock in your key and you want to make it one part, um, well, like just the key cut out. So like it's the back where you're sliding the key and so it would be the eye. Mm -hmm. So like just the spear and notch. Yeah. Just to combine those together. So that's the other big thing about this is you could do what's called Boolean operations. If you go over here to modify and you hit combine, you can join. You can do the intersect, 
or you can do a cut. Now, is that, is that all straightforward? Mm -hmm. Join is going to take two boards and it's going to merge them, or a keyhole, or whatever. It's going to make those one part. Okay, so if you got something complex, say you need to make a, a mallet head, and for some reason you want it to be all one part. You take the mallet portion that you designed, you take the shaft of the, of the mallet, and you hit join, and those will now be one piece. And you can do one operation to that one piece. So if you're gonna make a cutout for a padlock or whatever, that will make uh, one solid body. So, so that whole thing will be combined and joined. So um, in this one, if we wanted to join two, if we wanna join items, we can, we can click on those. And now it will, collect, it will uh, make all those as, as one body, and it shows up over here. And so now that whole thing is one part, one piece. Now say, instead of that, I wanted to do, instead of joining them, I want to do a, um, well, an intersection is not going to show up. An intersection, if you will, is like if you've got a Venn diagram, you're going to get the, the part in the middle only where the circles overlap, okay? That's an intersection. If you want to cut, you're going to get more like the Apple logo or the Mac, whatever it is, the Apple logo, right? It's going to cut out that other portion. Does that make sense? Do I need to show a demonstration of that? Uh, yes, I can do that real quick. All right, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna make, um, the other thing you can do, and I don't do this a lot, because it's not as precise, and I feel like woodworking were a little more precise, but if you wanna just really throw some stuff together quickly, you come over here to create, and I'm gonna create a box, and I can just create a box without doing all the, uh, 3D stuff I want to do earlier. You can still put your dimensions in, all that stuff can change. But real quickly, I just made a box, no problem. All right, now I'm gonna create a sphere. So I just come down here to create sphere. I'm gonna create it on this plane right here. I'm gonna come to the corner of the box. I'm gonna make a pretty good sized sphere so hopefully you guys can see what's going on. <clears throat> I've got several operations here. This is just like the Boolean stuff we were talking about earlier. I've got join, cut, intersect, and make a new body. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new body so I can demonstrate how these operations work together. So I hit new body, I hit OK. Now where that sphere and that cube meet, there's two bodies in that same space right now. So um, what I'm going to do is demonstrate how these work. So I go to modify, combine, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a join. The join it's going to take these two items, so it's asking me for a target body and a tool body. So I select both of those and I hit join. And now these are one body. When I come over here and click on this body, it's now added these two things. So as I was mentioning earlier, these are your bodies, these are the features and the steps you went through. So say you make a mistake and you want to turn around. You can take this thing and it works like a timeline. You can reverse the things that you've done. Okay, so I got rid of that sphere. The, first, the next thing I did before that was create that, that sphere. I combined these parts. I did an extrusion cut, all that stuff. If you zoom in, these things are reversing. They're going back in time. And you can start designing in that space too. Like say, for some reason, you need to go back and add a feature, but you need to do it before you, you did this. You can do that, no problem. So right now, I've basically frozen time. I can go back and design on that specific portion of time in the design. So I'm going to go back, I just slide and drag this thing and now all my stuff is back. Okay. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to change this feature. These are called features. I'm going to hit edit feature after I've right clicked and I still have the same target and tool bodies. Instead I want to do a cut. So my target body <coughs> is, the, is the, the cube and the tool body is my sphere. So it's just going to cut the sphere from the cube. And if I hit OK, it's just going to get rid of it. If by chance you need to keep that sphere for something else, you just hit Keep Tools, and it will still be there and get rid of it. But now you can see that that portion has been cut out. If I need that sphere for something later, I turn it back on, and there it is. OK, so if I go in here and I edit this feature, I can do the intersection. And now it's going to give me a quadrant of that sphere. So with those features, you can, you can cut away and make 
so many things. Like, it really just comes down to thinking about how the program works, thinking about how you would make this in your shop, and joining the two together to make a solid design. Um, so, this is good for flat work, right? So the other thing you might be interested in is making a turning. And for some reason, I don't know, I'm more artistic on the lathe, I guess, and I just wing it. But um, for some reason, if you've got some design things that you want to design in a circle, we can do that too. So I'm going to sketch. And I'm just going to sketch on this uh, right plane here. Come over here in open space. And right now, I'm going to come down to sketch. I'm going to go to... Um, what do I want? I'm, I'm used to doing this with uh, commands, so I apologize. This can get a lot faster, too, if you know the hot command. You can, you can go through this so quickly. So I'm going to create a spline. And I'm just going to... The spline, what it will do is create key points. And these key points will create a nice, smooth arc through all this. So you're not having to freehand these nice sketches or whatever you're wanting to do. All right, so I'm going to come down here. This dotted line <coughs> is a blue dotted line that's going to connect horizontally. That lets me know that I'm on this, the same line horizontally. So I'm going to click on that, come over here to this check mark. I click that. That ends my spline. And the last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and create a line. I can click L, or I can come up here to create line. Create a line across here. Now, if you see the area in the middle has turned orange, that indicates that I've got a closed section. So that'll let me extrude, it'll let me revolve, which is what we're going to do now. So I'm going to hit stop sketch. And you can dimension all this stuff too. Oh, and one more thing. Splines are extremely handy if you're wanting to like freehand, make things organic, stuff like that. What you can do is you can come in here, you click on this point that you just created, and you can change these curves. These tangent handles is what they're called, will allow you to change the shape of this curve. You can click and drag this. Until you have this constrained with dimensions and it turns black, all this stuff is completely movable and draggable, and you can change your design however you'd like. I hit stop sketch. I'm going to come over here to create. I'm going to do a revolve. It's asking for a profile. I'm going to click this uh, orange profile that we made earlier. It's asking for an axis. I click on that uh, cell right there. Click the axis, um, the center axis of this, and there automatically it's going ahead and creating this body for me. So I hit OK, and if that's what you were creating, some hourglass shape or whatever, you can now do that. And then you can add, subtract from that, whatever you want to do, world's your oyster. So Jared, come, several questions. Yeah. SketchUp, have you used SketchUp in the past? Yes, I've used SketchUp. For many years, and you found the three, Fusion 360, and yep. you instantly fell in love with it? Or yes. Was there a, a divorce period there? <laughs> it was very bitter, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it, took, it took a few things from me, but only my designs. Luckily, I didn't have any money at all. No, uh, yeah, I did use SketchUp for a while, and I found that like, it was very archaic. Like, um, so Autodesk, who makes AutoCAD is the people that made this. And I started using that back in like release 10, if any of you are in the industry of CAD or any of that stuff. I started using that back maybe 20 years ago. And what you have to do is go in and you have to delete a line, and then you have to go in and remake that line, and the whole thing has to be remade. So you can't just click and drag like you can this and it'll automatically update. It has some of those features, but it's not what they call fully parametric. So you can go in and change these dimensions on the fly. Um, the other thing I can do really quickly and easily is say I wanted that bench to be longer. Instead of going in my sketch and doing all that, I can just um, come over here, modify, and I can do a press pull. Click on this, and instantly my bench is getting longer. Like, it's just very dynamic. You can change this thing on the fly. So if I just get out of that, I hit OK. Now I've got a bench that's 16 and a half inches longer. Um, it's just very dynamic. Can you do anything like cut lists or anything like that? Um, cut lists are a little more difficult. Um, I've created plans before using this, and what I used was this and PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. I created some extrusions. A couple other mo uh, modes that's got in here I'll highlight real quick. You can do models, um, patchwork you really don't need to worry about, sheet metal, it does all this stuff. Rendering, it'll do animation, simulation, 
and manufacture. So when I use my CNC, this thing, I can actually, I don't need any other software. I just need this and the, and the actual interface software that runs the G-code, but this will generate all the G-code to tell the machine how to do all this stuff. You can generate straight to G-code. Straight to G-code. Generate as you need to go straight to G-code. That's right. Cool. Yep. And so um, if you went in here and went to uh, manufacture, I can create all the paths I need to create. CNC, it'll do laser cutting, all this stuff. There are add-ins and things that you can do to add into Fusion that third parties have made to, to work with their software, like Omax <coughs> does water jetting, all that stuff is in here. Now, if I, I want to create a, probably got an add-in for cut lists. Or right, yeah, and I, there are there is one of those. I haven't figured out how it works just yet. It's supposed to optimize this stuff. You have to dig into that a little bit more, but I can create a drawing. So if I go over here and create drawing from design, all I got to do is I create let me show you one more thing before I jump into that. I apologize, I know there's a lot going on. But this is a really powerful program. One other thing I wanted to be able to show you is if you hit, hit A for appearance, I can come down here and I've got all sorts of materials. So right now it looks plasticky, it looks very unreal. I come over here and I, I can go down this giant library of stuff. They have a whole thing of, of different materials. They have three dimensional materials and I'm going to come over here to unfinished wood. I click and drag, and I want to apply this to a whole body. Let's do it to this turning over here. I created it. It looks pretty much like walnut right here. But I come down here and I go to render. And this can be a little bit dependent on your computer, but this thing will look very, very much like the actual product. So a couple weeks ago, I designed a table for a yacht, and I, I drew the whole thing up, put the exact materials, walnut, maple, all that stuff, and the guy knows exactly what he's getting. So I don't have to go back and argue, well, this is what it was supposed to look like now. You know, we talked about this. It's totally documented. You've got clear, concise communication with whatever you're making if you're doing some sort of um, uh, project for somebody. So, what this thing is doing right now, you can't see it well up there at all, but it's creating more like a photorealistic image. So um, it will look very, very real. You can put backgrounds in here, you can put images, whatever you want to do. What about exploded view? Like exploded. It can do exploded view, it can do animations, the so whole nine yards. Fly apart. Yep, fly apart, come back together. So for that, you come over here to animation. It's got a timeline on the bottom. You drag the stuff to where you want it, create a key point and the whole thing will fly together, come back together, reverse, forward, 360 spin, you name it, it'll do it all. And they didn't pay me to be here. <laughs> yeah. When, when you were doing the bench, are the dimensions on there? Uh, the dimensions are not like clearly obvious. If you create a drawing, like I was mentioning earlier, I'll go ahead and do that. And I come over here to hit models yeah. from design. It wants me to save my, my work, so I'm just going to say test. And this is going to save it to the cloud. It's going to put it in this folder that I've got for 3D printer accessories. And it's going to create a new drawing, B size, from these parts. And it automatically, it's warrant running a little slow right now. This is not a great computer. You don't have to have an amazing computer to run this, by the way. So I'm creating my base view <coughs> here pretty zoomed out because we made everything so far apart. I go ahead and hit OK. And if I zoom in here, this is the parts we were making earlier. All you got to do is come in here and hit dimension. And right there, you've got a dimension. You know, whatever critical dimensions you need, you just click on it. It automatically generates it. If I need to know the distance between these two points, I just click on those. Creates a dimension. Now I know exactly what I need. This is really rough, I understand. But um, just to demonstrate, then all I've got to do is come up here and hit print, and I've got a printout of exactly what I've just drawn up. So you can create plans from that. Yeah. If you wanted the drawing bigger, like that table right there, yep. can you take it on a thumb drive down to Office Depot? Absolutely. What I would do, what I would suggest you do is come in here, and uh, I think you can do print, and... PDF. And print to PDF. And I would print it to a PDF, make sure it's the right scale, the right size you want, and go ahead and print it down there. So you could do, like if you're wanting to do something organic, like I was saying, it's really good for making full-size prints, and then you could just make templates off of that. 
and, and you know, guitar, scroll saw work, whatever you want, and you can go down there and print and work it by hand, absolutely, all day long. Um, let me think of one more thing. Okay, so there's a lot of questions about like uh, using this in your everyday workflow or whatever. Um, how do I get out of this? Okay. I don't want to be in render mode. I want to be in model. So the main the main uh, mode that you're working in here is model. The other thing that you can do is say I want to create a sketch of something, and I'm just out and about, and I take a profile shot, and I know that's what I need to do because I'm a woodworker, and I know I need to recreate that thing. So if I go in here and I create sketch, I'll do it on this surface this time. Come over here and get some open view. I can insert an image, an attached canvas, um, and I can select the <coughs> image. Um, no clue what's going to come up here. Let me save something real quick. You can draw over. You can draw over anything. So if I found this out there, I'm just going to save this to my desktop really quick as JPEG. Come to my desktop, and here here's that picture I just I just uh, took. You can take a picture of your cell phone. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. And it's asking for a face, so I'm going to select this face. It's going to come in here. I'm going to move this over here. Hit OK. Maybe I didn't scale it properly. Try this one more time. But you could, you could, what I'm trying to get at here is you can take these and draw over it and sketch whatever you need, whatever you want to. You can just take it in here, draw lines over it, draw sketches, dimension the whole thing. And so you can take something from real life and put it straight into a sketch. Um, for some reason, I'm not getting this thing to cooperate at the moment, but this is how you do that. So you insert a canvas and go through it that way. You can 3D print from this, straight from this application into a slicing software. You can run a CNC. You can do PDFs to go print it off it. Uh, FedEx or wherever and, and run all this by hand. Um, really, it's just how you, how you can think of and use it. Um, they have a Mac version? And yep. That's how it, Available Linux. Mac. Version. Huh? Do they have a Linux version? I don't know about Linux. That's a good question. Um, is there any other features you guys feel like this would have that I could touch on real quick? I have a question. Yeah. Okay, so let's say I'm, I, I walk away from this thing and I want to learn this. Yep. How do I go about uh, doing, I mean, what kinds of uh, resources are available? And okay, so yeah. I'm going to read. Uh, clearly a lot of depth going Yeah, on. there's so much going on. I apologize. This is no, really just to whet your appetite. Great job. Kind of show you what was available and out there. There's a lot of tutorials online. I would suggest going to YouTube. Fusion has their own channel that they've got. But um, this guy, I know um, from the internet stuff pretty well. We talk back and forth. But DH Handcrafted. He's got a Fusion 360 for woodworking, and he shows you how to make this simple woodworking from this box. And he can send you step by step, show you step by step through this whole process. There's a lot of different things on here. DC, here's a woodworking bench tutorial, so you could just watch that whole thing if you're interested, if you didn't know that was there. Um, they've got all sorts of resources. This thing is, it'll do everything. I've never came across something that I couldn't think of in my head to design or make. And let me just, real quick, I've got another uh, thing open. This stool that I made, I, uh, I made it completely dynamic. So this was the one that, that I showed earlier. Um, but I can come in here, I hit change parameters, and I've set all this up. So when I was creating those dimensions, you, don't, you can't just put, you, you can put in more than just, <coughs> you can put in what are, these are called parameters. And I can come in here and I can change this. So right now that stool is 14 inches tall. And say I want to make it, 30 inches tall. I hit, put in the 30 inches, I hit OK. This thing just grew to 30 inches. I didn't have to touch anything. So I could totally change my design. If you set it up properly and, and do the proper work, this thing's it's got so many, so much potential so quickly. 
So once you get a design done and you want to modify it a little bit, it's very easy to go back in and do that. It does seem like it's a lot more uh, powerful. It's got a lot more features than, yeah. than uh, SketchUp does. Very much so. And um, another thing that you can do is a mesh um, feature in here. I made my kids cosplay costumes, like helmets that I 3D printed out. So totally organic shapes. It doesn't just have to be straight lines and stuff. If you got some crazy art project or whatever you want to make, you can do all that stuff. So, so like for example, Dave's uh, Les Paul. Yeah. Um, his drawings are all on PDF. Uh, sorry, his drawings are all on PDF. Yep. So, so what I would do is I would, like I was trying to show you earlier. PDF in there. I would, yeah, I would just take that PDF, import it, uh, insert the image like I was saying on canvas, draw over draw it really quickly with the slides, slides, extrude it. Create the cutouts for the instrument, uh, the hardware. Yeah, for the, yeah, for the electronics. And then I could just go over here to the manufacturer tab, generate the G code really quickly, send it to my CNC, and I'm off to the races. So, I mean, it's it's a very very powerful tool that you can use to to do armchair shop work. So, you know, if you can't always get in your shop late at night or whatever, a lot of times I won't get to be in my shop because my shop is right below my kid's bedroom and it's 11 o'clock at night and I still want to work on my shop stuff. So I can come down, sit down, and draw out all my designs, get everything exactly how I want it, and then I can make the most of my shop time because I've already done the thinking process of it. I know how I want to do it. So. And you know, the great thing about modeling, whether Fusion 360 or SketchUp or any of the 3D modeling programs, yeah. Is it lets you see right away? Well, heck, if I put that there, it's going to interfere with this right here. And so you'll be able to notice interferences, things like that. Yeah. So that stool I made. That's one thing that I can't stress enough. There's background. <laughs> that's one thing I can't stress enough is you. You guys have this experience. A lot of younger guys don't. You got to think of how it's going to be made and manufactured. So when I made this, I've got. I don't know what you call it. I'm showing my lack of. Uh, Woodworking knowledge here, but we've got two joints that come together just like this. And I had to cut it out with the router, and I knew that, or I, I was thinking ahead, so I knew that I couldn't make square corners. The router can't cut a square corner when it's looking straight down on it. So instead, what I did was I created what's called a dog bone, and I cut out a circle here, which is very minimal. I designed it that way, but it'll, it took into account the radius that that router was going to take into, into uh, when it cut. So that, if that makes any sense, I relieved the area so that I could get a nice square uh, joint in between them. Same thing on the bottom here. I, cr I created those dog bone patterns to insert this into this bottom panel. So um, just keep that in mind however you're making it. Try and think of how, or you're modeling it. Think of how you're going to actually make it in the shop because that will save you a lot of headache down the road. But this thing is really good when you've got something kind of complex with complex angles. You can dimension off of them and figure out what they need to be so you can set your saw to that. But you can also see, like you were saying, interface issues and places that you might have trouble later so that you can work around that. Buy the tool that you need, save up for the tool that you need, whatever, and make sure that you can make what you actually got in mind. So, very good. does that make sense? Was that helpful? Yes. Very good. Very good. Cool. If you guys have particular questions, you can email me um, or you can Facebook me, whatever. I've got a YouTube channel called Small Shopworks where I do some of this type of stuff. I kind of show some of that on the computer and then make it to my shop. But um, feel free to send me an email. If there's a whole lot of interest or if we're low on, um, on ideas, we could go more into depth to some of this stuff where we actually make a, make a guitar body or whatever. And I could show you how to do that, but um, there's just so much to this I can't cover in one night. Yeah, that's a great overview. Teach a weekend course. Will I teach a weekend course? Yeah, I might could do that. <laughs> I would have to set aside some time, but if there's enough interest, I could do that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we can come up with a project that everybody wants to make, and yeah. That's it. Is there any dick spice? Is Dick's going to do lunch? <laughs> Sounds like it. Uh, yes, Tim. I'll take care of you. I know where there's a dog bone. <laughs> or deer. Okay, well, uh, thank you all very much for coming. Thank you very much, Jerry. Great job.